Hi guys, Todd here. Today we're going to be having a look at a mod from Stentorian and it's called the Basilisk. And it looks something like this. Now, it's Joule 18650. They say it goes up to 200 watts and it doesn't have temp control. Zero, nada, nil. No temp control whatsoever, just wattage. You can, however, you do have a, a normal vaping mode. You have powerful, powerful plus, and you also have a, a power curve feature as well, where you can tailor the curve to suit your own vaping requirements. You are looking about 80 pounds in the UK for this. I've seen it at esig1.co.uk. The, the links will be in the description, but you can buy this across the globe. And there are also, I think there's five different versions in total, but that'll do for just now, close-ups. Now the mod does come well presented. It comes in a nice big presentation case like this. On the back, you'll find that information. There's no spec on the mod there at all. The manual is quite a basic affair, it doesn't really go into, it covers the basics, it doesn't really go into much detail and, and that's kind of all you get on spec there. I did also find an atty protector, you know you just put this on the bottom of your atty and it's going to stop you scratching up the top of the mod, so yeah that option is there. But here we go, here's a couple of them, this is the black peril edition and this is just a blue one. And you can see we've got a gunmetal and a stainless steel affair going on here as well. You are looking at 85 millimeters in height, 55 millimeters across, and 26 millimeters across the top here. Just want to point out, you know, you do have a slight curve going around the edges here, but uh, a 25 millimeter atty will fit on here with no overhang. It is a spring-loaded 510 here. And yes, this is, uh, you know, there's no issues with this going to pop off. I've had the top off and there is a nut underneath that is clamping this 510 down. We do have Basilisk written on here along the top, which is quite nice. The resin is, is very similar resin to the Ram Squonker. Uh, it's incredibly soft and smooth. It's... It's one of the best things about the mod, I will be honest, is, is the resin finish on here. It is beautifully done. And once again, just giving you another comparison, you can see that the different versions going on here. The batteries, the battery door on this is, is also something that's done really, really well. Uh, I mean, it literally is just pull it across and you know, that's it. And out the batteries come, no problem. Batteries back in and you've got indicators going on here. That just pops down, push, and in she goes. Uh, so yeah, job well done on the battery door here, no issue. As for venting, yeah, you have the slot here. Yes, the door, uh, you know, it does have these holes in it, but you know, if I blow through this, put my mouth to this, then there is air traveling through here. We have a pretty simple affair here. You will notice there is no USB charge point. No, so there's no firmware upgrades. You have to charge your batteries externally. So if you're buying one of these, take that into account. You have to buy yourself a charger as well. So five clicks and on she comes. Now I switched one of my lights off here just because that was flickering quite badly and it was making it hard to see. Uh, but you can see just now I'm actually in a rebuild mode just now. But before we fire into the menu, you know, it's got a nice soft click going on to the button here. No issues with the firing button at all. Works really well and yeah, there we go. Up and down buttons here. Hold my down button and the fire button. And that just flips the screen around like that. Hold the up and the fire button and I can then go through the various modes. So we have a standard, a rebuild mode, standard mode, powerful and powerful plus which I will cover at the end but the rebuild mode, so we'll just go into that just now. So we have a six second firing slot here. So each bit you see here that you can adjust is one second. So I'm starting off my vape here, 55 watts. It then drops down to 40 watts and stays at 40 watts the whole way through. But using the up and down button, I can adjust that power curve there. Hold down the fire button and that's it. If I pop on an atty just now and I start firing, So you can see that it's actually just showing you each second as you're firing. There is a slight issue with this as well, but I'll cover that at the end. 
and that really is it um, once again we'll just have a quick look around here do you know I don't think it's a bad looking mod at all they do have you know the metal bits here are curved so it's not going to dig into your hand curved around here again and size wise I just want to compare it to uh, you know another dual 18650 there, there it is next to the paranormal it's actually smaller than the paranormal there's the V-God Jewel 18650 and it's the same size as that in most respects. So whilst when I first took this out of the box I thought it was a big boxy chunky affair, it's not. It's in keeping with other Jewel 18650s that I have here. Now for me this is, and as always with these things it's personal taste, but we'll, we'll, before we get to the, the nitty gritty stuff, um, I will say that for me I don't find it uncomfortable to hold uh, and it is it does, you know, when you first look at it, it does look like a boxy affair. And it is, it's a box. Let's not, you know, kid ourselves here. Uh, but it's not entirely uncomfortable to hold on to. And I do, I think the best feature about it is the resin. Um, it really is quite bonny. And yeah, doesn't look too half bad there. Too half bad? Anyway, the battery door big thumbs up in the battery door, I've, I've no issue there whatsoever, the 510 um, works fine, it's not going to go anywhere, I've looked inside this and you know the soldering, the wiring all seems to be great, right, uh, the, the let, we'll go through some of the cons okay, because there are some cons to this device, now first things first, resistance, the way this reads resistance, I have found across the board compared to Yeehee, compared to DNA boards and so on, uh, if it reads 0.5 on say a DNA board, this is reading 0 0.02 under that. So this is reading 0.48 as opposed to 0.5 on everything else that I have in this shed. Uh, so it's reading just 0 0.02 out compared to everything else. That goes for both mods that I have tried here. Yes, it's a niggle, but I, and, and I've been completely blunt here, this isn't a temp control device, it's just plain old wattage, so it doesn't make two craps of a difference, you just turn the wattage up or turn the wattage down, adjust to taste. But I just got to let you know that. As far as the battery indicator goes, now it does fluctuate, so when you push the fire button, it will do what the Yeehe boards do. You know how your Yeehe board has a battery indicator, when you fire it drops, and it's showing you the voltage drop in the batteries. Uh, this does kind of the same thing, albeit a bit slower. Um, so just now it reads 100%, if I fire it drops down to 94% and then bounces back up to the 100. It's just a bit slower. When using this mod it will cut off, there is a, a, a battery cut off, so with the two batteries it cuts off at 3 volts. Yeah. So I fired this until it said no more. It wouldn't fire again. Took the batteries out and it said three volts. So that's what you get. Now I know some mods, you know, you can, the batteries will go down to 2.7 volts. This three volts cut off there. Now this is something that Mr. Bissardo uh, comments on and he tests and, and I thought I would give it a go with this. So one of the batteries that was sitting at three volts, uh, I took another freshly charged battery. So I had one at 3 volts and one at 4.2 volts, chucked them in there and started vaping. And I know on some devices it would not, it will not let you vape because that 3 volt battery is on the limit. This however does, it will continue to let you vape and it will drain that 3 volt battery even lower and it will continue to drain it. I got this down, I stopped at 2.6 volts and uh, just stopped no more. Now, it does that. I can't change the fact that it does that. I don't know when that would happen in real life. I don't know when you would decide to throw in another, an odd battery, because when you vape with a dual battery device, it's it's kind of written in the law now that you, you marry your batteries, you have two batteries, you keep them in pairs. So yeah, it happens. I'm not taking away that fact, you know, it will drain one battery down even after saying it shouldn't, but keep your batteries in pairs, chuck them in, and it does drain them evenly and it will cut off. I've just got to mention that, I don't know why, but I do have to mention that. Firing in standard mode, <laughs> it's bad, I don't know. Um, if I push the fire button in standard mode, there is a delay. 
there is a definite delay. It's just say if I'm at firing at 50 watts, if I have it in standard mode, it kind of like goes to 30 watts, waits for a couple of seconds, and then it comes up to 50 watts. There is a definite delay. There's a two-step fire process there. Um, it's almost like a kick down in an automatic car. It's annoying as hell. And because of that, I always vape in powerful mode with this device. If you vape in powerful mode, you get 50 watt vape again, say, that powerful mode, it's almost like a 10% increase, it kicks up for two seconds. That's what I find, you get a two second increase and then it drops down to where it should be. It gives you a consistent vape when you're in powerful mode. Powerful plus for me just seems to kick it up again for three seconds and, and that's the difference. Um, for me, whilst I've been using it, I just have it in powerful plus standard mode. There is something wrong there. There's something wrong there, but powerful plus just compensates for it. Rebuildable mode works. Um, you can set your power curve and I don't have any issues with it. The, uh, the only thing I find strange is that you have a sec six second curve, okay? So you set your power settings, you know, for each second of that curve. If you fire for longer than six seconds, it goes back to the start. So if you have a 60, 70 watt start, drop down to 50 watts, continuous at 50 watts. So you're vaping away, it'll start off at 70 watts. For five seconds, it'll go 50 watts, and then bam, it'll go back to 70 watts again, and then drop down to 50. So it's continuous. It's not like, um, you know, a lot of them have, say, a 10 second window where you set your curve for that entire 10 seconds. For this, it just loops on a six second power curve. I, I am a 0 0.46 ohm build here at 30 watts. I've got it set to powerful and... But don't get me wrong, it works. It's a simple device. It's just a plain wattage device. And if you bung an atty on here and set it to powerful, it will vape and the battery life isn't terrible on it. I've not found any issues with the battery life at all. In fact, outside everything that I mentioned, the, the, the negatives, uh, I, I don't have anything else to level against this. It is, I think it's a bonny looking mod. Um, yes, there are other resin mods out there. Some of them are a lot more expensive. Some of them are cheaper. Uh, but it just does have those slight niggles. I think the board needs to be improved in this. I really do. I think the board needs to be tweaked. Um, the mod as a whole is actually, I like the mod. I do especially like this one. I think this is gorgeous looking, this one. Will you get the 200 watts? I doubt that very much. I really doubt that very much. Once again, as I said in a previous review, it's hard for me to tell. I'm using 25 hours, Samsung 25 hours. Uh, I don't vape anywhere near 200 watts. So for me, I can't, I, honestly, I can't tell you in that one. Uh, I do think if you're looking for anything up to 150 watts, you'll get it. After that then, and this is just, you know, I'm just guessing on this. I'm just going on the board and the way it's been behaving. I'd be very surprised if you did get that 200 watts. And that's it for the, the Basilisk. Now, I kind of fast-tracked this one because I did, when I got it, I did come across these little issues straight away. So I just want, I've been testing this pretty much non-stop since it came in. Um, so that's why this review has come around so quickly. Uh, there are already reviews up in America for this one, so I would recommend that you go and watch them. And I know that a lot of the UK reviewers already have this in, so there will be other reviews coming along from those guys. For me, it's a good mod. The board is flawed. That's what I've got for you. I got sent this free to review from Stentorian Direct. Once again, you'll be able to buy this for about £79 in the UK, or just go and have a Google and you'll find it pretty much everywhere else. As always, thank you for watching, and until next time, bye for now.